Today on Tricurl Studios, we talk about what I did to my Jackson X-Series RRX 24-7 7-string seven Rhodes V. All right, so here we go. Here is the Rhodes 7-string uh, V. It's an X-Series. Now, I don't know how many times I've been told this. I've been told that uh, this is a King V um, from people in the comments. Definitely not a King V, as you can see here. Long, short, it is a Randy Rhodes V. That's why it's called the RRX 24-7. RR is for Randy Rhodes V. Anyway, with that out of the way, <laughs> uh, I picked up this guitar along with um, two other seven strings, or no, it was one other seven string at the same time. Uh, and I wanted it obviously because it's an X series, which X series are great guitars, uh, especially for mod platforms. Um, it's an awesome shape, very comfortable if you're sitting down, at least I find. And uh, of course, it has the gloss back of the neck, or sorry, the gloss finish neck. Everything is in uh, poly gloss black. Uh, so I bought this obviously because at that point I was absolutely in love with seven strings. Uh, not that I'm not anymore, I'm just kind of moving away from them. Uh, however, there were a few things that, like it wasn't a bad guitar or anything like that, but there were a few things that irked me a little. So let's talk about the upgrades that I did here um, to actually make this a much, much, much more killer guitar, I guess you would say. So starting off with the tuners. The tuners that were on it were just the stock Jackson tuners. They weren't that bad. Um, however, with a seven string, I find just because with locking tuners, you don't actually get wraps that go around your post as you're tuning up, uh, tuning up and down. Um, and I find that that's very important for the lower strings. Uh, so I got USA Spurzel locking tuners. These are the easy mounts, so I didn't have to drill anything to the headstock. Uh, so it was easily, if you know, I wanted to swap out to like Grovers or anything like that, I could still do so. Um, the next thing that I did is, and this is more of a preference, um, just because I find that some of the uh, bridges that Jackson uses, after like a year or so, or a year or two, um, there's either a little bit of movement. I've had like two guitars from Jackson have a little bit of movement uh, in the bridge. Uh, but the saddles, after like a year or two, um, you can actually sometimes move them just by moving your finger. Uh, so, and that's something like uh, I'll intonate my guitar once a year and I don't do a lot of like crazy cranks or anything like that. Um, but the Tone Pros, uh, especially since it's, it's a locking bridge too, it's nice when you... Like if you're changing the strings, if you go like this, the bridge doesn't fall off. Small little thing. Um, but uh, with the Tone Pros, I've, I've never actually had one where you can actually move the saddles just with your finger. The last thing that I wanted to update here on the guitar, or upgrade on the guitar, were the pickups. The Jackson stock pickups, um, when you're just listening to them on a YouTube video, they sound great. And it's not that they don't sound great. Uh, but when you, you know, invest money into a guitar, especially for this, I can't even think of how much I've actually thrown into this guitar. Um, but they're very harsh, and especially for cleans, they break up way too quickly and way too easy. Uh, and they're not very well balanced for cleans. And, uh, like, when you are, if you're doing something like that, uh, they're a little too dirty and a little too muddy. Um, well, muddy wouldn't be the word, uh, scratchy to the ears, <laughs> so they're harsh. Um, so I wanted to, and this is where I, I did a lot of research on what pickups to actually put in here. So I uh, got the Seymour Duncan Nazgul and the Sentient in the neck. Um, the initial idea was to use push pulls and uh, have the coil taps enabled here because they are four conductor pickups, but I never did get around to it. Um, and it's just like, it's kind of perfect how it is. And, uh, even though for some, like some lead work, it's very, very nice, very, very handy, um, to have the coil tap in there or, you know, just like maybe a little, a little bit of, if you're going to do a little bit of a uh, single string tapping, uh, with like a crunch tone, it's very, very pleasing to the ear. If you have the coil tap on, 
Um, so you have like a P90 slash uh, single coil type tone. But it's, again, perfect, I felt, uh, how it was. So anyway, that's really what I did to this guitar. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I find when you're, I don't I want to say putting a few, like a little bit of dissonance in your notes and stuff, like... I find this is the best guitar. Uh, this and my Ibanez RG7321 with the... Um, uh, Fishman Fluence Moderns in it. I find those are a little more reactive uh, like than the DiMarzio pickups that I have with them. Uh, even though I love the Titan, uh, I find it's a little nicer uh, for that type of a sound, if that makes any sense. Anyway, we'll fire up the VHT Pitbull here and uh, we'll get a sound sample going. 